Red Rock Indian Band is preparing for a protest. Good evening and thank you for joining us. They will stage that protest in Nipigon on Monday as they fight to bring home the remains of their ancient ancestors. The ban issued a media release today sharply criticizing Parks Canada for the excavation work that turned up human bones dating back hundreds of years. The groundbreaking was held in May at the Nipigon Marina for the new headquarters for the Lake Superior National Marine Conservation Area. The excavation work for the $37 million facility was halted soon after when human remains were discovered. Red Rock Chief Alan Ottawa says since then the remains of three other people who lived before the 15th century have been found. Ottawa says the band is trying to search all the excavated material as it was dumped in numerous locations, leading to what he calls a morbid scavenger hunt to find all the remains of their ancestors. The area is now considered a sacred space and Parks Canada is looking to build at a different location in Nipigon. Plans for Monday's protest are still being finalized. The plans for a new cardiovascular surgical wing at the Thunder Bay Regional Hospital have taken another step forward. The bidding period has now closed for contractors wanting to build the major expansion project. Jonathan Wilson has the details. Hospital officials confirm they have received bids from the pre-qualified proponents. No one was available for a TV interview. The number of bidders and the names of the companies were not disclosed, nor was the price range of the bids. The project would create 14 cardiovascular surgical beds, six coronary care units, one new hybrid operating room, and the expansion of an existing operating room. The hospital will now review the bids with advice from a third-party consultant. The next step is preparing the final cost estimate to submit to the Ministry of Health for approval. Barring any unforeseen challenges, hospital officials anticipate being able to award the contract in early 2025, with construction beginning soon after that. There's no estimated time frame for when the long-awaited cardiovascular surgery unit would be ready for patients. The Our Hearts at Home campaign has been raising money for the project for several years now and recently exceeded its $20 million goal. Jonathan Wilson, TBT News. Thunder Bay appears to be on track to match last year's new home construction numbers, according to the latest stats from Canada Mortgage and Housing. The head of the city's development services department says the number of new housing permits is even more impressive. Justin Hardy has the details. The CMHC keeps track of housing start numbers for major cities across the country. For Thunder Bay, the year-to-date stats are nearly identical to 2023, with 167 new housing units started between January and September. 126 of those were apartment units. There were also 37 new single detached homes started and two duplexes. CMHC uses the actual start of projects for their numbers, while Thunder Bay's Development Services tracks projects by building permits issued. Director Joel DePeter says last year the city issued permits for 301 housing units, a modern record. And so far this year, they're at 310. This year, will, you know, it has been and will continue to be a very busy year for uh, construction. And it has also been a very busy year for issuing building permits, some of which uh, would be under construction for next year. So um, uh, the, this, this year already, uh, more building permits have been issued uh, for new residential units than was the case last year, in the total of last year, uh, which was a very busy year. According to the numbers from both CMHC and the city, a large majority of units being built in Thunder Bay are apartments as opposed to single-family homes. DePeter says there are a variety of reasons for this, but one of the main ones is density and the ability to accommodate more people in a multi-unit building than in a detached single home. I think Th Thunder Bay has had, it has a very low vacancy rate, uh, often, you know, at times the lowest in, the lowest in Ontario. Uh, and there's a strong, you know, strong demand for apartment units and condominium units uh, that uh, exceeds the supply currently. So right now we are seeing that um, roughly, you know, maybe 75 to 80 percent of the residential units that are being constructed are apartment units. New home construction is even more important for the city these days as federal and provincial incentive money is available for cities that meet their ambitious housing goals. DePeter says Thunder Bay is looking at accelerating residential development and increasing housing density. Justin Hardy, TBT News. Residents around Huron and Hudson Avenues are being given advance notice about some upcoming blasting in the area. Starting in about two weeks, explosives will be used on the bedrock near that intersection to make way for some new multi-unit residences. A pair of three-story, 12-unit apartment buildings are already under construction on Huron Avenue. 
Ontario Aboriginal Housing is planning to construct four more similar buildings in behind them for a total of 72 low-income apartment units. The blasting of the bedrock near Hudson Avenue will be a daily occurrence over the span of two months. The contractors say each controlled blast will be very small to reduce the impact on the neighbourhood. Surveys are taking place for residents near the site to record conditions of their house in case any possible damage does occur. A landmark decision from Ontario's top court today, it has ordered a new hearing for a climate change lawsuit against the provincial government. The lawsuit was started by a group of young people, with two of them from here in Thunder Bay. CTV's Siobhan Morris brings us more. Our win today shows that our voices and concerns matter. A victory for seven young Ontarians who took the government to court over its emission targets. Weaker targets, they argue, put their futures at risk. It's the first case in Canada to contemplate whether a climate plan could violate someone's charter rights. This is an important day for climate justice. It's an important day for government accountability. Ontario's Court of Appeal has ordered a new hearing for the group after the case was dismissed by a lower court. The province's highest court found mistakes were made. And that Ontario's failure to act on climate change is risking the lives and well-being of its citizens. This ruling boxes Ontario in a corner. Lawyers want to get this case back into court as soon as possible. Now they have to meet us on the science and the evidence where they know they are weak because climate change is a reality. It's something the young people involved in the case have seen in their own communities. The impacts of the refinery show up in foods and plants. They're restricting my community's access to traditional food sources. Lake Superior has had a shocking reduction in ice cover, something that impacts how my community is able to use the lake. But they're determined to fight on. We see a, a different world as possible. Putting governments across the country on notice and providing a bit of hope for the generation ahead. I believe that our case can make a real difference for young people in Canada and put Ontario back on track to take real climate action and start working for a safer future. And that was CTV's Siobhan Morris reporting. An issue that's taking center stage in the province is accessing family doctors, as we heard yesterday from Atacogan doctor, Dr. Sarah Newbury. It's something the Ontario Medical Association once addressed, as it releases solutions to fix what it's calling a healthcare crisis. CTV's Beth McDonnell brings us more. It breaks my heart when I have to say, you know, the practice is full. Dr. Dominic Nowak is a family physician and president of the Ontario Medical Association. He and his colleagues made an impassioned plea to bolster the number of family doctors across the province. We're seeing these numbers all across the province, but Toronto is, is hard hit as well. The GTA is hard hit. We're seeing nearly one in four people who can't find a family doctor. According to the OMA, there are more than 2.5 million people without a family doctor now, a number they predict will grow to 4.4 million in less than two years. We're paying for it eventually, right? People are paying for it in terms of their health, and then our healthcare system is paying for it by supporting these more expensive types of care. The OMA is concerned about the lack of people who want to be family doctors, the burden and cost of running practices, and hours of paperwork taking them away from patients. 33 months from start to finish, and it was not a fun 33 months, I can tell you. Stephen Steele knows how critical having that family doctor is. His referral for hip surgery got lost in the system for two years. Eventually, he went back to his family doctor for help. If I hadn't had a GP in the first place, it would have been a disaster. A spokesperson for Ontario's health minister says since 2018, the government has added 12,500 physicians to the workforce, a 10% increase. The government also points to expanding the medical education system and investing in primary care teams to free up thousands of hours for patients. Let's support those practices. Let, let's let doctors focus on being doctors so that we can attach everyone in this province to a family doc. Beth McDonnell, CTV News. A Mississauga man is facing multiple charges following an OPP investigation into drug trafficking in Thunder Bay. The arrest was made October 1st in the Cumberland Street area. Police seized a loaded firearm found in the pocket of the accused, along with quantities of drugs sus suspected to be fentanyl and cocaine. Officers also confiscated around $4,000 in cash. 
The 33-year-old suspect remains in custody, facing numerous charges, including drug trafficking and possession of a firearm. With Thunder Bay having one of the highest drug-related deaths per capita in Ontario, local officials continue their efforts to reduce the number of tragedies. The Thunder Bay District Health Unit hosted the Forward Together Harm Reduction Conference today, focused on helping those struggling with addiction. Their overall goal is to advocate for people who are trying to take the next steps to recovery by providing a comprehensive approach. This includes prevention, support, enforcement, harm reduction services, mental health support, and more. Keynote speaker Guy Felicella is an advocate for the cause after experiencing addiction struggles of his own. Safer drug use equipment such as sterile needles and pipes are available at various local organizations. Local first responders were called to the intersection of River and Balsam Streets at around 3 o'clock this afternoon following a collision between two SUVs. Police, fire rescue and EMS were all rushed to the accident scene. One of the vehicles became lodged up against the side of the building next to George's Market. The other SUV struck a traffic pole and both vehicles sustained significant damages. Fire officials say two occupants suffered minor injuries and were taken to hospital as a precautionary measure. There's no word yet on whether any charges were laid.